Rotoscoping is a lot of fun. Rotoscoping is where you shoot something for real and then you trace over those images, those video images, and then you get rid of the video image and you're basically left with this kind of odd imprint of reality, this weird tracing of reality. Live action footage is used as a base for a traced image that and then the base is thrown away, the base video is thrown away, and what we see are the tracings. Well, see, with Lemonade, we actually had to shoot the movie. We didn't just start from a clean slate. I had to actually start with, I had to get the video footage to use in the first place. Basically, we take every frame of the movie, the video frame, uh, export that so that we now have individual Photoshop files. Photoshop will take the video footage and chop it up into individual pictures in an image sequence. Um, then you add a layer, almost like adding a piece of glass on top of, the, of, of each video image, and you trace on that sort of virtual glass layer. And once you have traced over all the frames, added any colors, uh, then you delete the, the video layer. So then all you have left is the tracing. Uh, you can import those back into Final Cut Pro as an image sequence, and it should play those frames again. Once the tracing has been done, and I had the actual pictures, that it's not over yet. Um, at least for my project, um, there were more steps involved. Um, I had to add another layer for color, yellow for lemons or lemonade. Once that was done, I also had to do, uh, I decided to add in motion blur, because when objects move fast, there's a certain blur to it. And because the kids are whipping around so fast, I wanted to add motion blur, which is a pretty simple process. Once that was all done, um, I would draw the background, which is everything that does not move in each shot. So the background doesn't move. I'd, I'd add that in behind the actual drawings. Um, but the problem with that was that the characters that move are transparent. So then I have to go in one last time and erase the inside of the characters so that lines of the background doesn't show through the, the transparent people. So it takes a, it takes a long time. I had to get the video footage to use in the first place, but we had to shoot it during winter, um, so that, that necessitated the use of an um, alternate location. Well, the typical workflow for a, a rotoscope project around here is to shoot live action video, frame it, get everything that you want in the frame. It doesn't really need much requirements other than you get the action you're after, so you could, for example, shoot in a very cluttered gymnasium setting because of, you're going to drop all of that out. The advantage of shooting rotoscope though is that even though I shot lemonade in a gymnasium I could take out the gymnasium and replace it with the background of a suburban neighborhood. But beyond that it also means that I don't have to draw what I don't want to have in the frame. So I can do little tricks like having the actors fall on mats that later on I could just not draw or replace with something else. I could also do things like um, have other people destroy things by tearing down a lemonade stand um, and then later on just not draw the person who's just tearing apart the table or, or tearing apart a sign. You can even have the marks visible for the actors on like tape pasted on the floor and not worry about if the camera can see it or not because I simply wouldn't draw them. So there were a lot of little tricks that uh, made the, the, that's very unique to shooting the actual movie for the rotoscope process. It's kind of like green screen and that you don't have to worry about what you see and what you don't. It's not the final step, it's just the first step. It's almost a reference for the final image. I first started rotoscoping in Franklin Miller's animation class, and I did this really simple little um, fight scene between my dad and my little sister. Uh, my little sister is the same one who appears in the movie, um, where they're doing kung fu fighting. It was only 10 seconds long, but I really liked the quality of it and the way that it was this it was a cartoon, but yet you could still sense the, the soul of the actor or the person behind the cartoon. And I really like that sort of um, feeling that goes with, with rotoscoping. I think rotoscope artists, and I think of them as artists, really embrace the idea that there's this activity. And it's also an activity of just the line itself, just the characteristic uh, drawn line, which has an incredible graphic appeal. Your lines are going to be slightly imperfect, which is a good thing. Um, and so you get this sort of wavery, vibrational quality to the lines. The rotoscope wiggle happens because it's impossible to draw the same line at the same thickness over and over again. Especially if the characters are standing still, you can notice that there's this kind of weird wiggling effect that happens. And so a rotoscoped 
presentation is, is almost characteristically alive. Even if nothing is moving, the drawings themselves on a frame-by-frame -frame basis are changing. So it's this interesting activity given to the characters that's pretty unique to rotoscoping. The other thing about with, uh, with rotoscoping is, is a lot of people think that it's just tracing. Um, and it could be just tracing, but if you really want to make the image clear and make depth read on a flat, on a flat surface like a TV screen, you need to be able to distinguish between what's near and what's far away. And a good way to do that is to make lines that are close very, very, um, very, very thick. He's keeping a, a kind of implied space going, a kind of proscenium space where the foreground characters are drawn in a much bolder style and the backgrounds have been sort of shaded or, or paled out a little bit. This line around my hand would be thicker than the line that I would draw from my head and the line for the background would be even thinner than that. And that gives a really good perception of depth. It helps if you know how to draw, it helps if you know how to simplify the image. He's using rotoscoping as a, a way to get into a, a simple um, and I think very effective graphic presentation that's easy to watch, partly because we're not overwhelmed with detail. He's done a lot of subtracting. I struggled early on with the style with how to draw lemonade because uh, with rotoscoping, it's, it's almost as important what you don't draw as what you do draw. Um, adding too much detail can become almost confusing. Uh, whereas if you don't draw enough, you, you might lose details like expressions, frowns, grins that the, that the kids might do. These were all decisions that, that a rotoscoper has to make. The rotoscoping and, sing, and, and this sort of thing takes a long time because you're tending to each frame. Rotoscoping takes an obscene amount of time to finish because you actually have to draw every single frame by hand. And there's... 24 or 30 frames a second that you have to end up, you know, drawing. And even if, even if you only draw every other frame, if you do the math, there's thousands and thousands of drawings I had to do for Lemonade, which is a five minute long movie. I've been working on pretty solidly for the past year, I'd say. I would say for 10 seconds of rotoscoping, you can maybe expect to spend from 20 to 30 hours, just depending on the number of layers you add and, 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 and the detail. I was gonna ask, like, are you gonna keep doing this? Like... Do you have any other projects in this department? Not for a long time. Uh, are, are we still recording, by the way, yeah. Ashley? Are we? Yeah. Oh, shit, Jesus. Um, let's press record. It is done. Or stop. Stop recording. Yeah.